This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com. Welcome back, this is Chandler Rose. In the last video, I addressed Sulema's back pain by working on her supine on the spine by opening up the pecs and upper traps. And now I'll be working directly, blending modalities that I use in my practice to help address pain and limited range of motion. Let's get started. I have Sulema here laying face down. Her feet are bolstered. This will help us to work on the back in a supported way. As I start all my massage sessions, I like to touch in gently, take a breath, initiate a breath for her and for you at home. Time to wind down continue our work. In my previous video, I was addressing an imbalance that we found in her back. She has tension in her left thoracics and specifically in her left trapezius, upper trapezius fibers. So simply, I'd like to touch in on her spine. So as I begin, I'm just going to place one hand on either side of the spine in the upper thoracic region. This is also a really good way to see if one shoulder is higher than the other. And as I suspected, the left shoulder is definitely seeming to be a little tighter than the right, at least in this upper trapezius area here. So when I was working on her supine on the spine, I noticed that she had some density in this area. Feels like maybe she carries something heavy on this side of the body or it has a posture that she is doing over and over again that's causing this sort of imbalance. This also can be due to some difference in the spinal curvature. And it's okay to not be symmetrical on either side. It's actually very natural. So I'm touching in first without oil just to feel the density of this tissue. Up here we have the levator scapula, which is this muscle that connects into the shoulder blade and sort of swirls up like a ribbon and connects into the neck. And before I use my massage oils, I am going to just give her a little pressure there, a little stretch to help release that tension. And take a breath, really slowing down the exhale. And I can also see that her elbow is turning in a little bit, so I'm just going to shift this arm to a more neutral position. Sometimes the hand will come in. This is a good place for a trigger point. And typically you want your thumbs stacked, but if you have someone that doesn't need as much pressure, you can use one side if your thumb joint is strong, or you can switch between one hand and then the other, just to offer a little variation in pressures. And as I work a little deeper, I start to notice that muscle twitching. Are you okay with that pressure or would you like more or less? It's okay like that. Okay, good. So sometimes when you see a little twitching in the muscles, it's still a healthy pressure, but it's 
also really good to check in because if you see some resistance happening, it might be painful. So make sure your person is open to that deep work. And I can tell that she is initiating breath and so she is open to this manual work in her upper thoracic region. And since we did this great stretching and pec work on the front of the body now, the shoulders and the back are really in a position to stretch even more and relax with our trigger point pressure. And I'm just gonna take my hands and offer a little fascial stretching here going from side to side. I'm noticing as I'm working a little down into the lower thoracic region that as much as she has this tension here, she also has a little overdeveloped uh, hypertonicity on the right side, probably due from being right-handed. Are you right-handed? Yes. So I'm just gonna take my hands all the way down and offer a little stretch just to connect everything. I have one hand placed on the sacrum and one hand placed on the upper thoracics. And this is connecting the relationship between the muscles that connect into the sacrum and how the spine curves up into the mid-back thoracic region and upper cervicals, which is in the neck. So sometimes these simple holding postures can be very relaxing, but also can help the fascial structures unwind a little deeper. Now that her back is a little more warmed up, I'll use my handmade Rosie's Remedy to help soften this tissue a little more. These are natural anti-inflammatories extracted from plants. They are very good for regulating sleep and specifically serotonin. They also help amplify dopamine, which is very good for mood. So a massage can have multiple layers. You can get this very physical type reaction in the body, the physical part of opening the tissue, the part that feels good. And then there's also a chemical reaction that happens when our, our system that helps us slow down, breathe deeper and fall asleep starts getting activated. So a little blending of modalities here with a loamy technique, sweeping up through the shoulder and down into the sacrum. And certain tender, tight areas may feel ticklish and may just feel sore. I oftentimes get the, the image of a, a tortoise or a turtle when I work on the back because for people, most people, it's our shell, our place where we are somewhat guarded, but it can also handle more pressure than the rest of the body. So I like the idea of taking off the shell and working on the individual underneath that shell. And some people have a very dense 
layer and some people have a more movable layer. Was that too much pressure? Okay. So her left is definitely starting to relax. I'm going to switch over into another modality, which is trigger point. I'm going to pick up this tissue with my fingers and pinch it out towards the corner, opening up the case of the muscle, the fascia, and all those layers around this upper trapezius. And because we have this dense portion that's really been kind of nagging at her, these little areas around that portion will help to stretch a little deeper, help her feel like this density is moving. This area has a little more mobility in it. Taking my thumbs, raking down into the rhomboids, which are about here on either side. They're these rhombus shape shaped muscles which is why I think they have that name the rhomboids sometimes it's nice to look up a map of the body and then when you get a massage you have this new language this new visual imagery in your mind of what is being stretched And just going back over these layers, I feel that her ribs are a little more protruding on this side, which could be due to the fact that she's very dominant on her right. She might have a little twisting action happening. I'm just gonna come back to my Swedish to smooth things out. Sometimes when you do some deep work, it's nice to give the body a break with your kind of more fluff type body work. And a breath is good. You can see the body rise and fall. And after the body goes back down after a breath, another it's another good place to start working on something new. So I've switched now to her right side, which is her dominant side. And I'm going back to the levator attachment, which is right around the corner of this shoulder blade here. Also something really good to have an image of if you look up the scapula, you can see where the levator attaches. And I'm taking my trigger point therapy thumbs, stacking them above this attachment sinking down she's initiating breath so she's definitely feeling this but i can tell she needs it she is a traveler and does yoga and stretching so she definitely uses her body a lot and this kind of work is very beneficial for opening that tight shoulder area. And just to give her a little more variety and sensation, I'm gonna go back to a, a Lomi stroke, our weaving our weaving techniques that help encompass, support, stretch it, and allow the body to connect back to self. I find when people are getting massages from me, a lot of times it's because they're way overdue. By the time people see me, they're usually way overdue for a massage, which is kind of cool because there's a lot to be done in an hour or a half an hour. And from the perspective of the person that hasn't had a treatment in a while, 
there's this new relationship with, wow, like where is my body at and how is it feeling? And boy, I am really tight or I feel better than I thought I would. Usually it's that they just have lost touch with how tight they've gotten. She's gotten really tight over time and now she's feeling all that come up and breathing and letting it go. And the great part about peeling the layers back that we worked on with her supine, so face up, she's a lot more open now that we have her in this position, whereas most massages start in this position. So I challenge you to try starting your massages face up. See the difference, see if your clients notice a difference. It's really easy to get stuck in the back for 60 minutes because it feels good, but then you still have the same posture you started with, which is that these muscles are pulling the shoulders forward if the pecs are tight. The pecs are pulling the shoulders forward and there's a relationship there. It's not just one muscle group, it's the whole body is a pulley system. And I feel the best massage is the one that opens up all the dense areas and everything has a little more flexibility and room to move. Your breathing becomes slower you can take deeper breaths. You have more space in the rib cage in the thoracic area. And more mobility near the joints. And you've also moved any stagnancy that might just be stuck from our daily routines. Texting looking at a screen, driving, one leg forward, one foot pushing on a pedal, sitting at a desk, walking your dog, carrying your kids, all of these activities that we do over and over and over again. A massage is a reset button for all of that. And a magnifying glass into how your body is actually feeling. An amplifier of your tension and then a really great way to let it go. I don't think a massage should be about fixing a problem but I do think it is a good way to have a better relationship with yourself and to feel exactly what is really going on there in a way where you can just completely receive and let go. Come back with my pincer palpation technique here in the ribs on the right side, her dominant side, and then bring this up through the upper trapezius fibers. This one pulling out towards the corner can cause a headache referral. It can also really show you the status of your neck in relationship with your back. I don't get massages all that often, but when I do get them, I just think they are amazing. They, I always learn when I get a massage. I always learn more about how my body really feels. It's a reminder of feeling more like your most authentic self. 
kind of like running a couple miles and then stopping to take a breath. It's like, wow, I feel great, you know? Or maybe it's a really long, hot bath, like getting out and feeling like a layer has been peeled back. Your parasympathetic system is working again. You're in chill mode. It's, it's a really effective way to help your sleep patterns to help your breathing patterns become more natural. It's a really good way to help your relationships. If you're feeling more like yourself, you can be more available to others. Self-care is super important. So now that I have her a little more relaxed. I'm just gonna switch back and forth between a few different modalities so you can see how I do this in my practice. Lomi. Trigger point. Deep tissue. Trigger point. Deep tissue. Swedish. So switching between modalities is so relaxing for your person receiving. It's nice once you are relaxed or your person is relaxed to receive different types of sensation. The brain likes variety as long as it's not too sudden. So I would say a, a couple minutes trigger point and then maybe five minutes Swedish or Lomi. You know, give that person some deep work and then let them just breathe and maybe drift off. In my practice, I like to allow the person to completely let go. So they're not necessarily paying attention to what I'm doing. They're using this time to just be here, to not be in control of anything and to simply breathe and receive the benefits of these therapies. Sulema mentioned she has some low back tension as well that's now coming up for her. So I'll show you a few different ways to address low back tension as well. So specifically in this lumbar region, there are these muscles called the quadratus thoracis, a little higher up, and quadratus lumborum. Really common for women to be tight in here and have cramping that can refer to the abdomen. So you can take your thumbs, and if you're getting a little reaction in the body that is still in the flex zone. And this has a connection also to the status of the glutes and the hamstrings. I suspect she has tight hamstrings as well, which we can address in one of our next videos. This is a good place to breathe. Sometimes people will say, is that my kidney? <laughs> it's interesting when you're face down, things are sometimes hard to really feel where exactly the therapist is working because of referral sensation. 
So I would recommend just looking up your anatomy. If you're interested in doing deep tissue, you can look up trigger point maps, which will show you referral patterns that are common in all people. However, I do think it's important to note that everyone is an individual and we all have individual somatic tension due to memory or trauma in the body. So just because someone may have a referral pain from a common referral pattern on a map doesn't mean you're gonna find that exactly in everyone. But it is also a good place to have a common ground with other people. You know, you may look completely different, yet your referral pain is exactly the same as the person sitting next to you or standing next to you. We can all share this place of vulnerability in the body that we all have discomforts and we all appreciate being included in a way that doesn't come from judgment or from previous experience. So sometimes in my clients, they share that massage therapists can get a little cocky, you know, maybe they are addressing the body in a way that feels a little invasive or aggressive. Or maybe they don't go deep enough and that can be triggering for people too, feeling like they're not being heard or supported for what they're asking for. I like to meet somewhere in the middle, use my experience and my intuition and also listen. Listen to the words of what the client is asking for, but also listen to the body's reaction. If someone says that you made them sore and they're really worried about it, I would make a point to try to honor that and adjust your techniques if they would like to see you again. Or explain that sometimes when you work on trauma, in the body that can leave you feeling sore and that's actually healthy as long as it's not debilitating pain or worse pain than what you felt before massage should be a sort of release that feels better than your previous state of being a reminder of maybe how you felt at one other point in your life it should feel familiar like your best self. Little Swedish techniques after those trigger point points in the quadratus lumborum and thoracic, thoracis to smooth things out. I love working with these essential oils too, because maybe the first 10 minutes of your treatment is just about settling in and you're just supporting this shift from being a high energy space of driving to being low energy of just resting. Massage can be so many different things for people. Just taking one last breath to wrap up this portion of our massage modali modalities series. And in the next video, I look forward to working on her hamstrings, which will also help with any low back discomfort you may have at home. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.
Many of our subscribers don't see our videos. Make sure that you click the notification bell. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.